back from, well, far away to be honest. Um, I was out of town for a couple of days for business. Um, and just before I left, my ultrasonic cleaner arrived, um, which I didn't get to use because I was literally out the door when the guy arrived. I was like, hey, is this yours? I said, yes, that's mine, give me that. Um, citizen, watch brand, as I recall. Um, this should be decent at cleaning my airbrush, so happy with that. Although in a twist of fate, uh, they had these in stock and the cleaner that comes with it, also from Citizen, was apparently out of stock. And uh, as is often the case in Japan, those things are ordered by wholesalers from the US. They're sent here and then one runs out before the other and they have no plans or, I don't know, they're slow to restock them. That's pretty much what it comes down to. So I now have to find another way of cleaning my clogged airbrush. Um, I did pick up this and I realize you won't be able to read that because it's in Japanese. Uh, that says isopropyl alcohol and the Japanese don't mess around. That says 100%. This is pure isopropyl alcohol, which I didn't know you could get, but evidently you can. It comes with a staggering nine warning labels. Um, uh, so far I've ignored most of them uh, because I've been using this to get it out of the bottle and into the airbrush. Um, in low volumes and then washing this out right away so the alcohol doesn't eat away at the rubber um, uh, stopper here. Uh, so this is all just plain water. Um, that being said, because I don't have my um, sonic cleaner solution fluid thing um, and I don't really want to do some of the, you know, makeshift solutions that are online, like, hey, you should totally use, like, you know, window cleaner or something. Um, I'm just going to try and get some other fluids. Uh, the good news is that Amazon.jp here delivers pretty much most things in one or two days, even if you're not a Prime member, simply because Tokyo is a, is a distri uh, distribution hub. So, there's that. And then, um, the lighting situation in here for this camera. My desk lamp is an LED lamp has three lighting settings. I've been using the max setting to get the most light and it was casting really harsh shadows on my face. So we've set it on the second setting and you can tell me if you think that's better. Um, the overhead light stays, it's necessary. I've noticed that I tried it with the doors open, the doors closed for the lighting from outside. Uh, not great, it just cools down the frame a lot. Um, I still haven't figured out how to make it focus on models up close. Uh, the manufacturer's specifications say that the minimum focal distance for this logical C922 is like three centimeters. Uh, this model is at 10. And I was trying to grab it there at like 20. But anyway, the focus is crap. Um, as I said in my other video, they told me to go back to the store and uh, try to get it replaced. But I'm not sure the camera's broken. I think it has to do with the fact that Logitech no longer makes software specifically for their cameras. They no longer make capture software that supports these cameras. They're like, please use a third party. Um, and then when you ask them which third party do you recommend, they don't give you any recommendations because I guess they don't want to play favorites. Um, so you end up with software um, that may or may not recognize your camera or may or may not work with the settings features. And then the Logitech still makes two settings programs um, one is like a gaming streaming setting program, the other one is the, the hardware setting program. And I've tried to fiddle with it, but it likes to put the values back to whatever it thinks is right, and there is no option to override, like, hey, never change my settings again, ever, please, I know best. Um, so here we are. Um, so there is some teething problems to this hobbying of ours. Uh, for those of you who are in my situation, starting out, or just starting out, or starting out again as I am, um, these problems are really to be expected. If you're not streaming, the camera issues and the lighting issues may not be your problem. Although the lighting issue is an issue also for painting. Like if you're, if you're right-handed and your light is on the right side, like it is for me, you end up casting a shadow on the model you're trying to work with. Um, and so you see a lot of people with dual light setups, um, which, hey, if it's just a matter of me throwing money at the problem and getting another light, that is what will happen. Um, and then finally, things like um, just, you know, using an airbrush, like it seems easy and it is easy, kind of, um, like they're not made to be super hard to use, 
I would say the cleaning is a lot harder than the using. Um, specifically, the smaller the diameter of the nozzle, uh, and obviously the needle, um, the harder it is to clean, and then certain designs will allow you to screw off the, um, the paint cup, uh, things like that. Mine doesn't, that's welded on as part of the body of the airbrush. Uh, that is, as far as I'm concerned, a design flaw. Um, ideally, you'd be able to get into the nooks and crannies very well. Uh, I, ideally, they'd be large enough for a uh, dedicated cleaner brush. Um, in both cases, that is not true for mine. As you recall, it came with the set, so it's a cheaper one, obviously. So it's probably cast in one piece. Um, it is possible to keep it clean, I think. It's just a matter of how. Um, I'm seriously debating getting some sort of extender for the paints that are going to the airbrush so that I have less tip drying, the, the acrylic paints drying on the tip of the uh, airbrush needle, um, and also allowing for a greater gap of time between when you finish painting and when you actually get to cleaning your airbrush. Um, because right now it feels like you airbrush and coat and then you go clean your airbrush as opposed to you do something to prep for a second coat or prep some other model or whatever. Um, you can't leave that thing sitting around, um, which is a bit of an inconvenience because this hobby is kind of my hobby instead of having kids. So if I have to, you know, watch over them like a baby, then kind of the piece of purpose. Um, all in all, the positivity level is uh, it's taken a hit, but I'm still positive because I have these great models to work on. Um, I've been eyeing those... Uh, Wraith guard that it will not focus on. Anyway, this is a Wraith guard. Um, I think these would be super fun to paint. Uh, I've been on Pinterest, I've been online to look up paint jobs. Uh, some people in this model are crazy talented. Like they do things at this scale, which I'm not sure I could do if the scale was five times as big. Um, so that's exciting stuff to try. And then, uh, oddly enough, the the shopping aspect of this is not bad like if you like shopping this might be your hobby too uh, because there's so much stuff especially in the beginning to buy uh, and especially if you're going to stream it or uh, upload it to youtube as i'm doing um you get to go to a lot of stores and <laughs> enjoy yourself if that's your sort of thing um the next update will be uh today's wednesday here in tokyo the next update will probably be friday or this weekend so there's that to look forward to uh, in the meantime, there'll be very little process because I don't have my ultrasonic cleaner solution. But once that gets here, we clean the airbrush and we go back to painting the swan line, who is all green now, as you can see. Um, I've decided on a paint scheme. I think you're going to love it. Uh, I certainly think it's great. Um, no amount of research online has changed my mind, so we're going with that. And once those details start coming in with the airbrush, I, of course, have airbrushing videos. Um, and then the finishing touches will be my drawing collection of odd brushes. We got some Citadel brushes, we got some Tamiya modeling brushes, we got some Mr. Brush brushes, uh, and we got some Handy Crown brushes. Um, only five so far. I imagine that number will grow spectacularly as this process uh, evolves. And then, of course, we have the, let's not forget, Scorpion Mark II Super Heavy Elder Graph Tank, um, which is in need of some minor mending. Um, and as I said last time, that is where this stuff will come in. The liquid green stuff from Games Workshop will be used, um, I wouldn't say extensively, but to some degree to make this look better than it currently does. And I will try that by myself on camera, but I can't promise you I'll upload that video because I've never used this stuff before. Um, and depending how messy it gets, I may not want to be touching cameras and lights and things like that. So, um, but I will give that a go as well. Thank you very much for watching as always. That is the update. Uh, the next video will be, um, Friday or Saturday, Tokyo time, so uh, Thursday, Friday, pretty much anywhere else. Um, and then there will be some painting, hopefully, if my cleaners arrive. Thanks very much. See you next time.